Hello, are you the owner of a small business? Then I expect you want your business to be found by prospects and customers so that you can make money. I'm Glenda Shawley from The Training Pack and in this short video I'm going to share with you some tips to make your marketing work. You want to stand out from the crowd. Let's think about how you might do that. So the first thing that we need to do is to identify our target market. Be very precise about exactly who we want to sell to. It's often shown in research that 80% of our sales come from 20% of our customers. And 80% of our profit comes from 20% of our sales. You can probably see where I'm going with this. It's the Pareto principle or 80-20 rule. And what we really need to know are what are the characteristics of the 20% of our customers from whom we generate 80% of our sales and make our most profit. We want to find more people like them. The next thing to think about is what are you selling? Okay, maybe on the face of it you're selling bouquets of flowers, but is that what a customer's really buying? Yes, they might think they're buying flowers, but they're buying flowers for a reason. It might be to make their home look good, it might be to say sorry, it might be to say happy birthday or happy anniversary. There can be all sorts of different reasons why people are buying flowers. It's the same with photographs or pictures. Why are they buying? Is it a memory from a holiday? Is it to fill a blank space on a wall? We're buying clothes to make our children look good, to keep them warm and to make sure they don't look like they've outgrown everything that's in their wardrobe. And when we're buying food, we're buying satisfied tummies, we're buying good flavours. It's not just about buying a bag of potatoes. So what's the problem that your customer has when they're coming to buy from you? If you can identify that problem, the problem that's keeping them awake at night, the problem that's had them thinking about uh, the issue all day, and then you can provide them with a solution, that will have you with happy customers. So the first thing to do is to identify the problem that you're solving for your customers. So think clearly about what problem your target customer has. What's keeping them awake at night? What are their aspirations? What are they hoping to do? What we're looking for here is to tap into their brains, to tap into their reasons. People buy with emotions far more than they do with logic. And that's why we need to understand our customers really well. So what turns them on? What gets them passionate? What gets them full of enthusiasm? And what are their values? And can you match those values? Can you tap into those values when you're promoting your product or service. <clears throat> Can you answer the question, what's in it for me? And by me, I mean your customer. We all know that when we make sales, there's profit in it, or there should be profit in it for us. But what the customer is interested in is what's in it for me. That's them. So we're selling the benefits of our product or service matched to the individual customer. And your customer's also thinking, why should I choose you? They're probably faced with all sorts of different options. And so it's up to us to make it very clear why we're the best choice for the customer. So what would differentiate you from your competitors? People often talk about a USP, a unique selling proposition or perhaps point. These days people sometimes talk about a point of difference, but it amounts to the same thing. What we're trying to do is to differentiate ourselves from our competitors. So if we look at Marks & Spencer, a highly successful British retailer. When they started up, they had a very clear, unique selling proposition. It was, don't ask the price, it's a penny. Whatever they sold, it was always a penny. And they built up a reputation for really good value and quality products on that basis. John Lewis, another excellent retailer in the UK, has built up its reputation on the never knowingly undersold, uh, certainly at least in their stores. Um, and that's something where people can rely on getting the best value 
for their money. They know they don't need to go shopping around because John Lewis will always deliver on their promise. Domino's Pizza started off with the fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. That differentiated them from all the other pizza places where the delivery just happened to arrive whenever it did arrive. OK, Domino's have had to adapt that a little bit for safety reasons since, but it was a very clear USP in their first uh, few years. So how are you going to find your USP if you haven't already got one? Well, have a look at your trading hours. Could you differentiate yourself from your competitors by trading differently and, and trading when your customers really want you? I notice on my local high street that most of the, the smaller retailers trade very traditional hours, 9 or 9.30 in the morning through till 5.30 or perhaps 6 o'clock at night, when actually a lot of the customers are on the street uh, in the convenience store at 7 or 8 o'clock at night when they've got in from work. Uh, and if one of the smaller retailers was to open in those times, they probably would do very nicely, even if they only did it once or twice a week. Could you offer a delivery uh, that is different to your competitors? Um, you know, even offering a delivery might set you apart from your competitors uh, if you can time it so that it suits your customers better still. Are there any additional services, perhaps repair services or collect from the home or something that your customers would really value that you can add that would differentiate you? And what about your way of doing business? Perhaps you could go online or if everybody else is online, go offline. Perhaps you could uh, go mobile. Um, just think about what's the best way to reach your customers. What would make life easier for them than your competitors are currently doing? What standards are you applying? Could you um, offer a better standard of service uh, for a very reasonable price than perhaps your competitors are doing? And what are your ethics? What are you known for? What about sustainability? Uh, what about your, your charitable feelings or anything like that? Uh, is there something that you could do there to differentiate yourself from your competitors? So to finish off, here is one example of a business that really understood how to stand out from the crowd. Eddie Stobart has built a, the biggest trucking company in the UK on, from a, a very small beginning, but by understanding that they needed to differentiate themselves from their competitors. And they did that by making sure that their lorries were always clean when they left the uh, yard, that their drivers were properly uniformed, that safety and safe driving was one of the key issues and that they never break speed limits and things like that. Um, that they even published children's books on road safety and that kind of thing. So they're getting their message across by being very different. They have been copied and that's always a, a bit of a challenge when you set yourself apart. But by understanding that it was necessary to differentiate themselves from their competitors, they've built a very sustainable business going forward and uh, that's something that we can all aspire to. So what's going to make you different and what's going to help you to differentiate yourself in your customer's mind to make you stand out from the crowd?